Hey guys, before we get started, I wanted to point out a few things that no matter what will affect your ping. Number one, being the amount of devices connected to your network. Number two, your geographical location. Number three, you could have a trash ISP or internet service provider, i.e. their routing is terrible. Number four, you could have hardware limitations such as your router, modem, not using ethernet, or having a poorly rated ethernet cord. Number five, going a bit more on hardware limitations as well. Spec bottlenecks such as your RAM or CPU can affect system responsiveness as well. So keeping all of those in mind, let's go ahead and get started on the video. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this in the description and pin it in a comment if possible. But we got five things to do here for your network. Four of them actually apply. The first one being a safety precaution. Everyone make a restore point. Don't skip this. If you guys don't like the configuration and then get mad that you can't easily revert it, that's not on me, that's on you. So step one, go into your search bar, just type in create a restore point right here. Click it, go ahead, hit create, type in needleworker. Definitely didn't mean to type in network, stupid keyboard. Next up, we're gonna go update your network adapter. So we have Driver Easy. I'm gonna leave a link inside to the website. I have a little PSA right here. Yes, Driver Easy is safe. No, you don't need to be mean if you believe otherwise. And I'm saying this right now. I'm not saying update everything you see in there. In most cases, you should get it directly from the manufacturer. I use Driver Easy because I don't wanna get a million links, go through a million stuff. It's just Driver Easy is a great way to save time. And like I said, it's completely safe. So I don't care. So after you get Driver is installed, you just want to hit scan now. All right, so after you scan, it's going to go through all of your outdated or unplugged devices. I'm going to go ahead and do Bluetooth just because that's a small download, but you're going to want to choose your actual connection. And you can see what connection you're on by right clicking the network icon in the corner and then head on over to your properties where if you scroll down, you'll go ahead and see the description here. And this is what network adapter that you're on. So I have the Intel i2-11. And after you have that, you want to come back to driver easy, manual install. The automatic install is for the pro version of this program. You just want to go ahead and copy this location, close out of that, go on into device manager. And then here, you're going to want to scroll down to your network adapters, and then you're going to want to right click on it, hit update, hit browse and then you're going to want to paste it in here i'm not going to paste it this is for my bluetooth obviously but you're going to want to paste it hit next it'll install and then you can close out now that we have that installed we're going to want to go over the actual windows settings so i have a little bit of stuff right here in the text document whenever i just leave this blank you guys always think that it didn't go through so i i threw in some random stuff so once again you want to go back right click on the icon go into the network settings go into advanced network settings and then head on over to the more network adaption options. And then here, once again, you are gonna want to go to that connection that you figured out that you are using earlier and disable all the ones that you don't use. And then after that, head on over to properties. You're gonna want to uncheck pretty much all of these. Uh, the only one that I think you could go either way with is if you want to check the IPv6, but for the most part, it's safe to disable it. So keep only the first one and the fourth one. And then after that, go on over to the fourth one here and hit properties. You're just gonna want to type in Cloudflare's DNS. And if you want a more optimized DNS, you can hit Windows R in your keyboard, type in CMD. And then before you hit enter, Hit Control, Shift, Enter, and that'll run it as an admin. And then you're just going to want to ping Google real quick. So eights all around. You can see 17, 15, 17, 17. And then afterwards, type ping again, ping 1.1.1. And you'll see that Cloudflare's is a bit better for me, but if Google's is better for you, their DNS is 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. And then for Cloudflare, you can just copy what you see on screen. So 1.0.0. 0.1 in the alternate DNS. After that, just go ahead, hit OK. And then afterwards, we want to hit configure up at the top here. And this will go into our actual network settings. First thing you want to do is head on over to power management and make sure that this is unchecked. After that, head on over to advanced. And here we're going to go over all the settings. And if you have settings that aren't in here that you do have and that I don't, go ahead, let me know down below. I'm going to also leave a link to optimize settings for way more than just what is displayed in mine. We want to have adaptive interframe spacing disabled. ARP offload, turn it off. PME, it's kind of like a power saving mode. We want, we want to turn that off. Same thing with energy efficient ethernet. We want to turn off flow control. 
and then the gigabit master slave mode and the gigabit physical mode we want to leave those both on auto detect you won't really have to use them in a gaming scenario interrupt moderation i like having it disabled along with the moderation rate there are a few scenarios that it could be beneficial, which I'm going to leave a text document going over that inside of the folder. IPv4, check some offload. We want to turn that off. Jumbo packet, we want to turn that off as well. LSO for IPv4 and v6, we want to turn those off as well. Everything surrounding offloading is just really, really buggy, and we don't want to deal with it at all. So if anything says offload, just, just turn it off, okay? Locally administered address, you won't really have to deal with this too much as well. Log link state event, we want to keep that on disabled as well. Max number of RSO queues we want to leave it on too if you have an option for four don't do four i'll leave another text document or use the same one on why we use two and a soft load once again turn it off offloading is kind of bad packet priority in vlan i have it on enabled ptp hardware timestamp turn it off receive buffers i have it maxed out at 2048 other really good options are 512 and 1024 higher is better but there's specific cases on when you don't want to max it out so i'm going to leave that in a text document as well rs we want to keep that on disabled. Reduce speed on power down. That's pretty self-explanatory. Turn it off. Software timestamp. Turn it off. Speed and duplex. You can either do auto negotiation or your highest full duplex. TCP checks and offload. We keep those disabled as well. Transmit buffers. I have it capped out again. And if you guys do do a value that is lower than the max for your receive buffers, you want to make sure that it is half of your transmit. So for example, if you do set receive buffers to 1020 you want to make sure that transmit buffers are set to 2048. Now, it doesn't always work like this too, because like I said, with hardware limitations, your adapter could be trash. I've seen a lot of adapters where their max is only 128 or 256 or 512. Like you guys get the point. So in most cases, if you are able to make sure that your receive buffers are half of your transmit buffers. UDP checks some offload. We want to turn those off as well. And then all of these wait for, we want to keep those disabled as well. After that, you can hit OK. Your connection might go out for just a minute. It's completely fine. It's completely normal. You'll be back up in a few seconds. After that, we want to go over TCP Optimizer. Once again, it's going to be in a folder, but I know that Google has a history of not allowing it to be downloaded. So just be careful of that. You might have to download it on your own. I'm going to make another text document here with the link to the download page. So once again, right click as admin. It's going to get all your settings real quick. After that, you want to select the adapter that you have. Head on down to custom drag the slider to 100 plus, and then you're gonna wanna copy these settings as well. If you hover over it, it's gonna tell you what everything is. So if you're ever curious, just hover. We have auto tuning on disabled. We have scaling heuristics disabled. Congestion control provider, we have it on CTCP. The current default, I believe, is Cubic. And if you guys are interested on why we choose this provider over Cubic, go ahead, let me know in the comments, and I will be more than glad to tell you why. RSS, we want to make sure that this is disabled once again. Same with RSC. Time to Live, we have that on 64. Time to Live, we have that on 64. NC capability, we have it on enabled. Check some offloading. Keep in mind, guys, like I said, offloading is bad. We want to turn it off. Chimney offload, turn it off. LSO, turn it off. And then TCP 1323 timestamps, we want that on enabled enabled. After that, head on over to your advanced settings where you're going to want to copy all of these as well. So max connections per server. Recommended value is 10 and 10. Local priority, we have it set to 4. Host is 5. DNS is 6. And net is 7. Max sin retransmissions, we have it set to 2. If you have this value too high, you'll end up DDoSing yourself and you'll just lose almost all network functionality. So set it to 2. It's a good value. I think the default value is actually 4. So just go ahead, put it on 2. It works out great. Non-SAC resiliency, we have it on disabled. Initial RTO is set to 2000. Minimum RTO is set to 300. QoS, non-best effort limit, we have it set to zero. Do not use NLA, we have it set to one. Network throttling index, we have it set to disabled. System responsiveness is on gaming. And then Nagel's algorithm here is, uh, it's kind of a buggy mess. I keep it on default. There have been some instances where disabling it does give you a provided benefit. Now, I'm going to leave mine on default, but if you want to disable it, go ahead, set it to 1, set it to enabled, and then set this one to 0 as well. This is how you disable Nagel's algorithm. Once again, I'm going to keep mine on default because it is a buggy mess when I use it. Large system cache, I have it set to enabled, and then the size I have set to optimized. Max user ports, we want to set this to 65534. 
and then TCP timed wait delay. We want to set that to 30. After that, hit apply. And before you hit okay, if you guys want to know how it changes these settings, you can just scroll on over to the side and it shows you everything that it does. After that, hit okay. It's going to ask if you want to reboot. You can hit yes or no. We're going to be rebooting at the end anyways. So I'm going to hit no. I'm going to hit exit. And then for the last thing, we have the ultimate Windows Tweaker 5.1. And once again, this is going to be in a folder. We want to run it as an admin. And then after that, we want to go on down to additional. And then right here, the network adapter onboard processor. We want to turn it on, guys. This is such a huge tip. So after that, hit apply, hit close. It's going to ask you to reboot again. And this time, you, you actually do, guys. Guys, go ahead, reboot. And this concludes how to optimize your network. Check out my full PC optimization video. It's helped a ton of people, over 130K. I recommend you guys see it too. So with that, have a good one, everyone. Love you guys.